In this video, we're going to open one up and see how an entire library worth of books is able to fit within the surface of this metal disk. We'll start by opening up this hard drive and detailing the components inside. After that, we'll dive into exactly how the drive stores data using the read and write head. And in the process, we'll look at the tracks, sectors, and magnetic domains of the metal disk. Finally, we'll explore some of the latest advances that enable over a terabit of data to fit within every square inch of the disk. On the inside of this drive, we find a variety of components. Here's the disk, or platter, that stores all the data, and depending on the storage capacity of the drive, might be multiple platters tall. The disk is composed of an aluminum magnesium alloy with multiple coatings of other alloys, but the magnetic functional layer is this 120 nanometer thin layer of a cobalt chromium tantalum alloy, which has small magnetic domains or regions whose direction can be manipulated via external magnetic fields. The platter is mounted on a spindle which spins at a speed of 7200 RPM, using a brushless DC motor at its center. Next, there's a head stack assembly, with one arm above and one arm below each disc, and with a slider and a read-write head at the end of each arm. The slider is uniquely designed, such that it catches the airflow generated by the ludicrously fast-spinning disc and uses the airflow to float or fly the rewrite head so that it's only 15 nanometers or about 100 atoms away from the surface of the disc. For reference, here's the thickness of a sheet of aluminum foil. Because the arm assembly flies on top of the spinning disc, it's only brought over the surface when it's at full speed. And when the disc is not spinning, the arm assembly is parked to the side on a small piece of plastic. Back here, a voice coil motor composed of a coil of wire and two strong neodymium magnets above and below is used to move the entire arm stack assembly. When electric current is run through the coil, it creates an electromagnet, which is influenced by the neodymium magnets, thus generating a force that causes the arm to move across the disc. When a reverse current is sent through the voice coil, the arm is forced in the opposite direction, thereby enabling control of the exact position of the read write head within 30 or so nanometers. Additionally, the magnets and voice coil make a rather strong motor that enable the lightweight arm stack assembly and read write head to move back and forth to different tracks across the platter up to 20 times a second and to make small adjustments incredibly fast. In order to connect to the read write head, a flexible ribbon of wires is routed along the side of the arm and down to this connector, which feeds signals to the outside of the hard drive enclosure and to the printed circuit board or PCB. On the PCB, we have the main processor, as well as a DRAM chip, which is used as a scratch pad for the processor and a buffer for the incoming and outgoing data. Additionally, mounted on the PCB is a chip for controlling the voice coil and brushless DC spindle motor. And then on the edge of the PCB is a SATA connector, which connects to the motherboard for communications and a separate connector which goes to the power supply. Additional important components are the gasket that seals the disc from the exterior environment and two filters that catch any stray dust particles. These filters are necessary since the read write heads are just 15 nanometers away from the platter and a single dust particle can be up to 10,000 nanometers large and could cause major damage if it were to collide with the 7200 RPM disc. Now that we've looked through many of these components, Let's see how they work. To begin, the disk is divided into concentric circles of tracks. These tracks are then divided into sectors, and in each sector is a preamble or synchronization zone, which tells the read-write head the exact speed of the spinning disk and the length of each bit of data. The next part of the sector is the address, which helps the read-write head know which track and sector it's currently positioned over. After that, we have the actual data that's stored, typically four kilobytes of data per sector. 
Next is an area for an error correcting code, or ECC, which is used to verify that the data stored in the block is accurately written and properly read. And finally, there's a gap between this sector and the next, which allows the read-write heads some tolerance when writing the contents of a block. Now let's zoom in on the read-write head and the disk to see exactly how data is written and read. Writing data to the disk is done by manipulating the direction of magnetization of a localized region or domain of the cobalt chromium tantalum layer in the disk and forcing the region to be magnetized in the up direction or the down direction. This tiny magnetic domain or region is around 90 by 100 by 125 nanometers and when magnetized, all the atoms will have their even tinier magnetic north-south poles pointing in the same direction. In order to magnetize a single domain, which is equivalent to writing a single bit of data, a current is applied to a coil of wire at the back of the right head, thus creating a strong magnetic field back here. The magnetic field is channeled through the right head and focused into a small point at the tip and then jumps across the 15 nanometer air gap and into the disk. When the focused magnetic field passes into a single domain of cobalt chromium tantalum, all these atoms are forced to align their tiny atomic magnetic fields with the applied magnetic field from the right head, thus turning the small domain or region into a permanent magnet. The key is that even when the right head is moved away, the direction of the magnetic domains in this layer of the disk is maintained for years, and they emit a permanent magnetic field which can be repeatedly sensed by the read head every time you read out the data stored in this sector. That is, of course, until the computer and write head rewrite a new bit of data to the domain by either flipping the direction or keeping it the same. Let's explore how we read data from the disk. Thus far, We've been showing domains as pointing up as a binary 1 and pointing down as a 0. While this is conceptually simple, it isn't actually the case. Rather, the read head is designed to detect the changes in orientation for magnetic domains pointing in one direction and then the adjacent domain pointing in the opposite direction. This is because emitted magnetic fields from adjacent regions that switch their orientations are much stronger than the emitted field from just a single domain pointing one direction or the other. Therefore, each change in magnetic domain pointing in one direction to the opposite direction is assigned a 1, and an absence of a transition from one domain to the next is assigned a 0. Therefore, the right head would record a binary sequence of 00110010 like this, or a sequence of 11011110 like this, where the ones are changes and the zeros are lack of changes. So then, what's inside the read head that detects these magnetic fields? Well, Inside is a multi-layer conductive material composed of alternating layers of ferromagnetic and non-magnetic materials. This multi-layer material has a property called giant magnetoresistance, or GMR. And put simply, it's a material that changes its resistivity depending on the strength of magnetic fields that pass through it. Therefore, Using GMR, it's a simple matter of just measuring the resistivity. And when there's a low resistivity, that means there are strong magnetic fields below the read head, resulting from a change in domain orientation, and it's a 1. When there's high resistivity and no change, it's a 0. However, this poses the problem of how a string of dozens of non-changing domains can result in an ambiguous number of zeros. To fix this, in each sector, the preamble is simply a set of alternating domains and is used to set the size of each domain. And then the error correcting code at the back of the sector is used to ensure no data is lost. Next, we're going to explore some advancements in hard disk drive technology that improve the aerial density, which is the number of bits that can fit within a given area. 
In this graph, you can see how aerial density has increased by over 50 million times throughout the past 60 years. However, perhaps more important is that the cost to store trillions of bits of data has dropped by over 100 million times. Just imagine, if we were to time travel this hard drive back to the 1960s, it would be worth over $4 billion. It costs less than $40 and is far faster and more reliable than the disk drives from the 60s. Similar to the trend in hard drives, you can buy inexpensive and yet incredibly reliable printed circuit boards. Let's now return to hard drives and see some of the advances that allow this disk to store terabytes of data. First, around 2010, the orientation of the domain was switched from being horizontal to vertical, and with it the write and read heads also had to change their orientation. This change in orientation is due to the fact that as a magnetic domain shrinks in volume, it becomes more easily affected by temperature. So by changing the orientation to vertical, the domains or magnetic regions can utilize the depth of the material while continuing to shrink the area on the disk that each domain takes up. The next advancement we're going to look into is called Shingled Magnetic Recording, or SMR which started being commercially available around 2020. Before shingled magnetic recording, hard drives typically used the technique classic magnetic recording, or CMR, where the tracks of data are 90 nanometers wide and have guard bands on either side of the track. However, with shingled recording, the tracks are written to partially overlap with previously written tracks, with no guard bands to separate each track. Thus, we can fit many more tracks and much more data into a given area. Note that the read head is much smaller than the write head, and as a result, one shingled track can be reliably read at a time. The issue, however, is that if you write over a track, and the upper track of shingled data is still good or valid data, the drive will first have to read and store that valid data in the DRAM buffer and then write both the lower track of new data and the upper track of valid data. And as a result, the buffering and the extra read and write steps can result in a loss of performance. That's pretty much it for how hard disks work. Thank you.